Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Rebecca. But if you're already subscribed, welcome back. So as you can see from the title below, today I'll be talking about the medical school interview. And it's one of the most frequently asked questions on my channel. I realized that a lot of people were asking about the same question, like how did the interview go? Is it nerve-wracking? Whether I have any tips for you guys? So that's why I decided to accumulate all of the frequently asked questions and make it into a video so that you can rewatch it whenever you want or wherever you are so I totally get why a lot of students are worried about the medical school interview because it determines whether we get to go into medical school or not however I want you to know that this shouldn't be a big part of your worries there's a lot of other things that you should be worried about before entering medical school just enjoy the interview and just be well prepared but not to the point where it freaks you out personally for me I don't think that the medical school interview is that difficult in fact it was really really fun for me however it differs for each university so I will only be talking about IMU because I'm from IMU in this video I'll be giving you guys an overview of the medical school interview for IMU I will also be sharing some common questions that you might get and the case scenarios that my friends and I got as I talk about each question I will also be inserting some tips here and there so make sure you don't skip any part and just keep listening until the end without further ado let's get started so for the medical school interview in IMU we get to choose from three slots so you can either choose morning afternoon or evening it really depends on your availability so basically this interview will be carried out in a small room two interviewers will be interviewing you alone this interview will take about 15 to 20 minutes it really depends it can go longer if the interviewers are interested in you or if you have a lot of things to talk about so for this interview they will first ask you about three to four questions before giving you a case scenario these three to four questions are pretty basic and something that you can already expect before coming for the interview so let's start off with the first question that they might ask you which is introduce yourself when you're introducing yourself you want to keep it short and sweet so you don't want to be too lengthy about it because this is just a small part of your interview so keep your energy for other questions okay what I meant by keeping it short and sweet is probably just tell them your name where are you from what's your past education and if you want to share something about your family members go ahead and what are your hobbies and also why are you so excited to join this field this is my example of my introduction hello my name is Rebecca Ongruwen I am from Johor Bahru but I moved to KL to do my foundation in science in IMU I'm the youngest out of three siblings and I have a lot of things that I love to do like baking cooking dancing doing YouTube videos and most importantly I'm very passionate about doing medicine when you're talking about your past education just say that you graduated from A levels STPM or FIS you don't have to go into details you don't have to say that like I got four flat for STPM I got four flat for FIS that's really really not relevant and it might come off differently so when you want to talk about your family members just keep it brief you don't have to go into the details of it don't say things like my first sister is Michelle she is how many Many years old my second sister is now me she's how many years old people don't want to know that you know okay so when you're talking about your hobbies make sure to share something that you genuinely love because they might ask you further question on it at the same time while you're talking about your hobbies lead the interviewers to ask you why you choose medicine everyone knows that they're gonna get this question so if you guys have already prepared a very very good answer and you want them to ask like immediately try to lead the interviewers to ask you that question the second question that you might get asked is why you choose medicine make sure to prepare for it but do not memorize your answers this is because if you memorize something and you want to vomit it out in the interview this can be very very obvious it shows on your face for this question I feel that you have to be very genuine and honest because this is your personal reason why you're joining medicine when you're being very genuine anyone can tell so basically just tell them your reason why is it because someone inspired you to become a doctor probably your parents or your relatives maybe you watch Grey's Anatomy and that really inspired you so besides from being inspired by someone maybe you have a medical condition that inspires you to help people who have the same medical condition for me the reason why I chose to do medicine is because I want to become a dermatologist like that's my end goal it has never changed since high school the reason why I want to become a dermatologist is because I had really really bad eczema when I was young I still do have eczema and psoriasis now but it's 
very very mild already so when I was a kid eczema wasn't a really known thing yet not everyone is quite familiar with eczema that made my treatment harder there were gases everywhere and until now there's no like proper treatment for eczema basically I just want to become a dermatologist because I want to help people who have skin problems and also probably find a cure for eczema who knows I thought that finding a cure would be easy but like once I step into this medical field it's very very hard so yeah so that was my inspiration one thing that I want you guys to know while answering for this question is don't stress about it don't overthink things so this is the perfect time for you to share your story so go ahead and let it all out so coming to the third question that you may be asked is what are your strengths and weaknesses oh my god this question appears in almost all of the interviews that I went for before when you are answering this question make sure you talk about your strength first however when you're sharing about your strength make sure to not go on and on and on about it just keep it simple and brief because they will probably want to ask you more on your strength so probably you can say things like I have a very good leadership skills I can communicate well with people I'm a team player I'm a very honest person I'm a very patient person so things like that okay so mine was being soft-hearted Super cringe. Basically, I said that I'm a soft-hearted person. I tend to try to put myself in someone's shoes most of the time. I always put others first before me. Try to elaborate on your strength, but don't go too deep into it. We are done with strength. So right now, we are going to talk about what are your weaknesses. Please don't say that you don't have any weakness. Don't start off like, I don't have any weaknesses. I'm perfect. The interviewers will be like, what the heck is wrong with this girl? Before you come for the interview, take your time and think about your weaknesses. Everyone has their own weakness. Probably you can say like, I'm a very very shy person. I'm a person that can't accept any criticism. Or probably you can say like, I'm a slow learner. I said my strength was being a very soft-hearted person, right? But then that is my weakness as well. People try to take advantage of me. So my strength can also be my weakness at the same time. So one thing I can say about this question is don't worry about not getting accepted to medical school just because you shared your weakness. That's really not it because I feel that the fact that you're sharing it means that you realize that that's your weakness. And as long as you're willing to change it, that's good enough. Very important because people have to realize what they're doing wrong in order for them to change. The fact that you already realize what you're doing wrong, it means that you are taking the step to change, you know. So that's already very good. So yeah, we finished with the first three common questions that may be asked in your medical school interview. Right now, I'll be sharing to you guys some case scenarios that were asked in the medical school interview. The one thing that I want you guys to know is that there's no right or wrong answers. It's the justification that matters. So if you justify your decisions properly, you're good to go. Alright, so right now, I'll be sharing the first scenario. And this is also the scenario I got. Here it goes. You're a pilot flying a long-haul flight. Suddenly, a passenger in your flight collapsed due to a heart attack will you do an emergency landing or will you continue for another eight hours my decision was to do an emergency landing this is because i know that my passenger wouldn't last another eight hours and it's not that he's already dead he's still alive i will do an emergency landing to save his life okay so after that they asked me there's only one person who is in need of medical emergency but you are risking the lives of others. I told them that I totally understand that I'm taking a risk by doing an emergency landing but then I also said that I'm very confident with my skills as a pilot. The next thing that they told me was one person on board doesn't want to land. He said that it will delay the arrival time for him and he just doesn't want to do an emergency landing what would you do my answer was pretty easy so i said that i will get the steward or stewardess to try and convince him and try to rationalize with him why we're doing an emergency landing and i also told the examiners that there's only one person on board who does not agree with my actions so regardless i'm still going to do an emergency landing the next thing that the examiner asked me was what if something bad happens during the emergency landing like if he's injured or if he dies so I told the examiners that normally during a long haul flight everybody is covered by insurance so if something bad happens to him like he's severely injured or something he is covered by insurance and that shouldn't be a problem they said that they were really happy and 
the fact that I brought up the insurance thingy took them by surprise because they didn't expect that I would say anything like that. They were a little bit disappointed because they can't get me to change my decision. I feel that that's something that everybody should do. You should be firm with your decision and just stick to it until the end. So I got this second scenario from my friends. So here it goes. It's your sister's wedding ceremony and you have your medical school interview at the same time. Which one would you choose? My friend said that she will try to reschedule her med school interview with the university. They said no. Then my friend continued to ask them if this is the ROM or is this just the wedding ceremony. And then they said it's just the wedding ceremony. She said okay if it's like that she would choose the medical school interview because she would have already gone for the ROM and also for the nikah. The nikah is much more important than the ceremony itself. So that's why she chose med school interview. And then she also added on saying like her sister would completely understand because this determines her future she's thinking about the long-term benefits so that's why she chose the med school interview you can also choose to attend your sister's wedding ceremony there's no right or wrong to it so let's say you're a family type of person and you would naturally want to attend your sister's wedding and that's fine so for me I would also go for my sister's wedding ceremony because my sisters mean a lot to me and I just can't imagine not attending your wedding ceremony I will also tell them that I always believe that whatever is meant for me will be for me no matter what so let's say I can't come for this medical school interview because I have to go for my sister's wedding ceremony I believe that something better will be for me coming to the third and the last scenario that I'll be sharing in this video this is a very very interesting one and I've never heard about it before until my friend shared to me yesterday here it goes you're walking on the street and saw an accident when you walk over you realize that the ones involved were your husband and his mistress <laughs> the mistress had a higher chance of survival than your husband which one do you choose husband and mistress la pula da so i'll be sharing to you guys my friend's answer before i share my thoughts on this question so she said that she would save the mistress because she has a higher chance of survival since she's the only doctor at the scene if she chose to save the husband both the mistress and the husband will end up dead because the guy is already dying and if she's trying to like help the husband the lady might also die as well right so that's what she's trying to say and the examiner asked her do you not want to save him because he cheated on you is that why? And she said no, she just chose the mistress just because she had the highest chance of survival and her choice is very limited so that's why she will go for the mistress. So I need a moment to think who am I gonna save? You guys can also think who you wanna save. Your husband who cheated on you or the mistress who took your husband. I made my decision. The one that I would choose to save from this scene is the mistress my justification is obviously she had a higher chance of survival so that's why i would choose to save her instead of the husband second is obviously because he cheated on me why would i want to revive a person who will never change even if he doesn't cheat on me in the future everything will be changed you know like once a mirror is already broken no matter how you try to glue it back there will already be cracks in it because i will also say that i don't know who is the mistress and I will never see her again after I save her, you know? So it's not that she's someone constant in my life that I would have to face every day. I only have three case scenarios for you today in this video. We have come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching my video today. If you guys want more case scenarios and you want me to do a part 2, just let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and give this video a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!